question says, and this is a calculator section I should have mentioned. A survey asks 410 students whether they would eat food served in the school cafeteria. The results are recorded in the table shown below. What is the probability, so this is a probability question, that a student will not eat food served in the school cafeteria, given that given is a big important word here, that the student is in 10th grade? Enter your answer rounded to the nearest hundredth in the space provided. I'll give you a little spoiler here. There's a visual way that you can do this specific problem because of how they've broken out all the data, but uh, I'll get to that a little bit later. So since this is a probability question, I need to look at what components I need to uh, consider here. So the given thing is a big deal. So how you write this is you say, what's the probability of event B happening given that event A has already happened? So event A matters a lot here. In this case, the event A is the given, so this is the students are in the 10th grade. So what I'm really looking for is to divide by the probability that A happened, because it's the given. So I have to have this sort of broken out as a subset before anything else happens. And at the top, I'm going to write the probability of B and A. So what the B and A part sort of looks like is what's the probability that both events are occurring at the same time? But what's B? Well, the probability that they won't eat any food. So the first thing that I need to do is find out what the probability of A is. What's the probability that people are in the 10th grade if they're in 400 students, 410 students? So the first thing that I need to do is get a total over here. I don't really need to know the totals for 9th, 11th, and 12th grade. It's irrelevant because they give me this information. If they didn't, you'd have to find the totals and add. It's not that hard. Um, but the total here, 63 plus 47 is 110. So you should be able to get that yourself. Now, I don't know what happened to that T there. But uh, the key issue from here is now I need to find out what's the probability of this happening. So that's going to be 110 divided by 410. And that's going to give me the probability of A that I'm looking for. Since this is a calculator section, I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. So I'm going to say 110 divided by 410 equals this big long number. Now, you need to round your final answer to the nearest hundredth, but you can get away in this case with giving yourself a little bit of stream in terms of how long your number is for this part uh, because you wouldn't really round it per se. So we'll just put 0 0.268 and then 3. And you may have like something in your head. I remember my science teacher telling me that I couldn't round it. I had to keep it within a certain number. Does that apply here? Well, that's significant figures. You're not actually measuring anything. This is separate from that, so you don't really have to worry about that as much in this case. Now, we've gotten that part. That's all hunky-dory, so let's talk about the next part. Now I need to find what the probability of B and A is, which is to say they're 10th graders and they don't eat food in the lunch cafeteria, or they refuse to. Whatever, I'm not them. I'm here to judge them. So 10th grade, no, right there. That's kind of how that works. Um, so I take the 47, and this is probability of B and A. And there's notation for this, but I don't feel like putting it in now. I'll just use and. Um, 47 divided by 410. Because it's out of the total number of students, right? This is a very specific subset of the original group. So in this case, I'm going to do 47 divided by 410. I'm going to try to do that without. There we go. Hit enter. And I get some really long number again. And again, it's okay to do a bit of rounding off, but you don't want to do too much. So there's that. Now, I'm ready to do my final calculation. I have all the parts that I need. So probability of B and A is right here. I don't know why it looks like a turned into a 3 all of a sudden, but it's supposed to be B. So 0 0.1146 divided by 0 0.2683. 
So this is saying, okay, if you have this probability in your head already, I want to further define that at including just situations where this applies. So let's go over here and do that. I don't know why, again, that should not be going away, but it did, who knows. So I'm just going to divide by 0.2683, like I had before, and I get 0.427. It wants me to round to the nearest hundredth, so I'm just going to put in 0.43. So that is my answer for number 12. Now, I said probably earlier that there's a little, uh, maybe an even easier way to do this type of problem, but I wanted to show you that section first. Sorry if any lines kind of disappeared. The program I'm using to write with has its own little quirks. Um, but we're doing a given question, right? So the given is really the first division. So you're dividing this data into two specific points. So I'm given this. We really only cared about 10th graders. 9th graders are fine. 11th graders are fine. 12th graders are fine. But in this case, 12th graders, that was our focus. So if I only look at this component, and I have 110 of those people, and then I further divide that section into, well, how many won't eat? So that's 47. If I do 47 out of 110, There it is. It breaks it down the same as it would if you used the formula. I was just showing you that it kind of, maybe you didn't have to go through all that work, at least for this type of question. Be smart about when you apply that, but in this case it really works. It can save you a bunch of time, might make these questions go a little bit faster, so it's important to try to have all the components in place um, in just in case you need them. So choose your own adventure when you get your own test. I just didn't want to leave anything off the table.